afternoon. I wanted to welcome everyone, anyone that's watching this, to the first and many, hopefully of many video blogs. The premise here is to show you us starting from our respective startups um, that are still in basically in an infant stage, new startups. And what we're going to do is take these startups and hopefully build them into successful businesses. And along the way, you'll get to see our successes and our failures. And because we're recording this and documenting this, it keeps us and forces us to be honest and to share with you those successes and failures. So with that said, my name is Justin Perry, CEO and founder of Perry Media. And why don't you introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Tom Ladaris. Uh, I'm the founder of AB Films. And uh, yeah, I'm start this start up. Start this up. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I'll start with the first question. All right. And what would you say was the biggest surprise you faced when you created a startup? Ooh. The biggest surprise? Um, I would have to say the biggest surprise is uh, how quickly you get business and you start rolling. Um, honestly, I thought it was going to take a, a lot longer than what it was. Um, I would say in a matter of a month or two, we were getting regular um, inquiries on, on pricing and, and videos and everything like that. So that was the biggest surprise, honestly, because you always have that mindset, like the internet's this vast universe of of just content and so many people you're gonna, you're gonna get lost and not a lot of people are gonna find you but it's actually relatively pretty easy um, because it's the internet so you know if I wanted to find somebody who can cook an egg in front of a camera you can do that so it's it's now do you think that was just the case in, in, in your situation or do you feel as if that's indicative of all startups on the internet uh, it was I think it was special in this case just how things sort of rolled out because in the beginning, it didn't really start out as AB Films, so it's, it, it sort of grew into that, which is um, something you just have to be prepared for, too. So um, I would say being a, a, adapting to your situation is going to be key, too, uh, because if we didn't adapt, we wouldn't be where we are right now yeah. as, far as, uh, as far as AB Films. Um, it sort of just grew into that and it is sort of, you know, sometimes you, you don't find what you're looking for and what you're looking for finds you first and that's sort of what happened with AB Films. Yeah. So. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah. You want me to, uh, want me to keep going or you want to? Yeah, I'll ask you one. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's see. Um, what kind of, uh, of roadblocks have you come across so far in your, in your startup? Well, a lot of the roadblocks that I find myself facing are technical ones. Um, I find that when you're trying to create a company from scratch, there are unforeseen things that um, generally tend to pop up only when you're at that point where you need to address them. So I think it's good advice to sort of like create a roadmap before you start and, and look ahead and look down the road and say, okay, well, I know I'm going to need a budget. Um, I know I'm going to need to market at some point. Um, I also know that I'm going to need these resources depending on what your startup is. And um, for me personally, it's always been sort of driven by technology, realizing the power of the internet and also taking it into my own hands to be able to empower myself and to be able to have some sort of online presence. And um, I've always been really about the details, you know, you know, pixel precision is how I like to put it, you know, with, with building websites or any, anything to do with that, any type of marketing, it has to be exactly how I want it. So I guess one of the main things was the technical pursuit where... Um, you know, you have a lot of these website builders out there or like even using a, a theme with WordPress, which could be great, but if you don't have any technical knowledge, you might be able to get something that looks really a lot like you want it to, but then you get to a point where you want to tweak it a little bit and without that technical knowledge, even if it's just something as simple as controlling the CSS of a page, which is the style, um, if you don't know that and you're a perfectionist or, or somebody such as either one of us who really wants to have it look and, and feel exactly how you want it, that technical aspect is something that will always be sort of on your shoulders to make sure that that's like a burden on your shoulders that you're always trying to get right. Mm -hmm. and that and also I'd say budget, of course. Yeah. You know, that's creating a startup on a budget. Is, is, yeah. You know, if you have even ten thousand, never mind if you have a hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars for a budget, then you know you can hire developers and you can hire the best marketing team. So really, those two, I think those two principles are really. For me personally, the biggest roadblocks. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like budget's a huge thing with, with a lot of startups. Yeah. yeah. It's a big roadblock. Yeah. Big roadblock. And there's ways around it. You can get credit lines and stuff, but then, you know, you're already in debt before you even start. And, you know, I, I, 
let's be honest, every company at some point, or most companies take on some sort of debt. Absolutely. And they leverage it. So they know that they're going in debt because the bigger picture is they'll either be able to turn over profit or they're making more profit than they're spending in debt. And, you know, even bonds, if you think about it, bonds, issuing mm -hmm. bonds, that's debt. You know what I mean? So the U.S. government makes money by issuing debt, essentially. So yes. that's a big part of it. But it's, it's kind of scary when it's just you you know, out there saying, okay, I'm going to get a credit line for whatever it might be, $20,000, and you spend that on your budget, and if you've yet to see a return on investment, if you spent that $20,000, you owe that $20,000, yeah. and, you know, you better hope that you get an ROI, you get, you know, some good money back, you know? Yeah, yeah. which is, which is interesting, because I feel like a lot of people, especially freelancers or, or startup companies, uh, struggle, because I know I, I've seen a lot of it, and a lot of people talk about it, is the point of where, you know, you're working a regular... 32, 40 hour job for a paycheck to survive, but you're doing your, you're freelancing on the side or the transition of when do you tran transfer to, you know, doing just the freelancing of your company or, yeah. or what have you. And I think that's a, another huge roadblock a lot of people run into. Um, How do you feel about taking money that you have from, say, your, your nine to five and having to spend it on your, um, on your startup? Well, for me personally, it's well. First, I'll say it's it's probably an inevitable to, to do it. At some point, you will have to dip into some of the, the spendings you've made from you know your forty hour work job. Um, yeah, work job, work job. That makes sense. But um, I think it's inevitable. It's going to happen sooner or later, especially because uh, a lot of people get in the mindset that they just want it to happen faster. You know, yeah. they want to quit their job so they can just do their you know their freelancing job at the company or work on you know them, themselves and build their image and. Um, and that's, you know, people are going to do that. For me, I try to, I've actually tried not to do that. I try to spend only the profits I've made from AV films, um, but, you know, it's very slow going. You know, yeah. you know it, when I meant in the, the first question that you asked me, when it, I was surprised at how much business you get, um, and that goes a little bit towards the kind of, like, attitude and the business model I chose for when I first started out. And what I mean by that is, obviously, when you first start out and you don't have really a name for yourself, um, your your pricing sort of has to reflect that. So you get get that that core of customers uh, on your side, and that's something that's a tool that I use. It's not exactly the best tool because then people get in that mentality of you know your price range being low. But yes. that's how I, I sort of built up my my customer base and slowly, but bit by bit, as my the you know the quality of work that you push out. Um, so it gets higher, um, so does your prices, and it sort of just go, coincides with each other and it, it raises. Um, but that's sort of what I did yeah. as far as as far as that. But I try to use the profits just for maybe fills for a long period of time until it gets to the point where um, I had that customer base behind me, and you know their requests started getting bigger and bigger. So the equipment that I had to use had to get uh, you know on a higher grade, and then that's when like you said, the debt comes into play. So, you, you know, you, you get a credit line for some equipment that you use and then you just slowly pay, out, pay it off, which is not a terrible idea no. if, if, you're, if you're confident in, in how much revenue you're bringing in a month. But that's something you really have to budget, yeah. I feel, that, you know, you, you got to plan that way in advance before you actually push it. It shouldn't be like, I want to sell shoes, custom shoes, and then you get a credit line and do it. You, you need to really plan it out first. Yeah. You know? So have you, so I don't know if you want to answer this or not, but have you, have you had to spend money that you made from your nine to five to finance some equipment? That's some, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I think that's pretty much um, to be expected and I've actually read somewhere. Um, I, I'm not sure who, and I'm paraphrasing right now, but it was definitely not a successful entrepreneur who said at some point, you know, Hey, you're probably going to have to do that mm. to make it happen. Sacrifice, necessary sacrifices. <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Um, so how would you describe your business model? Ooh. So the business model that I have now. So I touched base a little bit actually already as far as how it started. Um, but I mean naturally when you have a startup, whether you're selling t-shirts, doing film, you're, uh, you play drums, you're doing music, whatever you do, it starts with you know who you know, which is a small bubble, your parents, friends, things like that, uh, which is good, but uh, it as far as business-wise, it's, it's, like I said, it's a small bubble. So what I decided to do is take the internet route and get my name out that way, which I mentioned a little bit before. Um, 
and there's different uh, avenues you can take for that. What I've used is uh, freelancing websites that basically, you know, you put your service up there uh, amongst millions of other people that are on there and you just hope that your, you know, your, uh, your content, the, the film that you've created holds enough value to somebody else that they'll actually hire you. Yeah. So, and that's, that's exactly what I did. And there's different websites you can do, um, which I, I feel like a, a, an episode would be dedicated to that alone because there's so much to do with that, you yeah. know, just between like the revenue you make, what kind of percentage the website takes compared to what you get, the stipulations, how much you can charge, uh, what you can do and stuff like that. It's huge. Basically the pros and cons. The pros and yeah, services. Which is huge in, within itself. But um, I use the the, uh, the internet basically. That's how I've been getting my business so far and it's uh, worked pretty well. Um, so, so, yeah, so you're saying yeah, that, you know, the advertisement aspect of your business model has been strictly through websites that sort of uh, self-generate traffic that are like self-sustained websites with clients as well as with custom uh, with clients as well as businesses so yeah competing for price which, points yeah which um, like you said it has pros and cons big pros and cons pros is that you don't have to do any advertising it does it for you yeah um, but the downside of that is they do take a cut so you know if I let's say I do a small little video for 150 bucks or somebody yeah you know X website is going to take 20% of that already. So that, that cuts you from a lot of the profits. So you really got to budget it if you got to be realistic with it. You know, if they want uh, a Santa costume, for example, you know what I mean? And they, uh, uh, and the Santa costume costs $50, that, that goes, you know what I mean? So you got to really budget accordingly. You got to, you know, you got to quote people the right price, yeah. which is tough because a lot of these websites, what's famous now is gigs. Like, you know, they have Fiverr out there, they have Fiverr up which is a pretty new website. And they have a, a lot of these websites that are low budget, basically freelancers, yeah. which is which is a, a, a pro and con within itself because everybody's already in that mindset of, all right, it's a, I can get something relatively cheap that's gonna be pretty good quality because you know, they wanna push out good work. Yeah, So I agree. I think that could be an episode too, talking about the, the gig economy, as yeah. it's being called. The gig economy, it's huge right now. Yes. Big time, big time. Cool. So, yeah. You want me to ask you a yeah, question? something for me. Oh, I can roll it up, yeah. <laughs> all right, so I asked you that. All right, one th this is a good question. Uh, what are some things you wish you did differently? <clears throat> some of the things that I wish I had done differently. Yeah. I'd say perhaps getting more involved with uh, understanding some of the technical aspects of being able to have an online presence and by that I mean I'm, I'm a do-it-yourselfer like I really like to be hands-on with everything and so I kind of waited till I was a little bit older to really get involved in the code aspect and a lot of people and by code I mean programming um, a lot of people don't even do that themselves but for me like I spoke with the budgetary aspects of it it's very expensive to hire developers or it can be anyway to hire a good developer so I decided to take that into my own hands and learn how to program and uh, to create websites as well as web apps and I kind of waited a while to do that, a lot longer than I had wanted, but um, I feel at this point, having some knowledge of um, at least, at very least of HTML and CSS is very important in this day and age because unless, like I said, unless you're somebody who's already rolling in the dough and you have enough money to hire the right developers or hire someone who's good at what they do and is willing to do it cheaply, then you pretty much need to be able to manipulate the web pages the way that you want to look. Because let's be honest, this day and age, you have to have an online presence, for the most part. Yeah, for the most part, absolutely. Um, uh, you were talking about um, how when you first start off, you have the people that are, say, your family and your friends, and word of mouth. <clears throat> you know, word of mouth is one of those things that, and I know I'm getting off subject here, but it's one of those things that sometimes gets a bad rap. Like, it's, it's sort of like the beginning stages of having, like, your own business, or the beginning stages of having your own hustle, if you will. Yeah. You know, I think that there's going to be a, a reinterpretation of what word of mouth means. Word of mouth is probably one of the best ways you could advertise if you think about it, though, because if somebody knows you personally or knows of your service personally, even if it's somebody who doesn't, say if it's not like, you know, your mother, your father, or your friends, or your family, but they say, look, I work with these guys. Um, they do great work. You can trust them. And somebody else hears that. There's something that goes off, something that clicks in the brain that says, you know, I can trust this guy because somebody else has vouched for them and said that they were good, yeah. said that they did a good job. And actually, I know somebody who, he owns like a, a you know, a, a hair salon in the city. He cuts hair. And um, I, I went to get my hair cut not too long ago, and I asked him, I said, you know, what's your customer base? Because he's been there for like 30 years now. 
and he said, you know, two, three hundred people, something like that. And, you know, you have to really stop and think. He doesn't have a website. Mm. Now, he cuts hair, so he doesn't necessarily need a website. Yep. Okay? But there's something to be said about that, that these people trust him so much that he has a customer base of almost 300 people. That's not a huge business, but how big can you really get when you cut hair unless you're going to open up chains? Exactly. You know, mm -hmm. so there's something to be said about that. But to get back to the question, to get back on base here, yes, I would say that was one of the things I would do differently, would certainly be able to be more knowledgeable about what I was doing. And even on the marketing side, maybe get into it a little bit earlier. And um, maybe also certain times when I had a certain, I guess, for lack of a better word, which sometimes this word gets abused, is the word synergy. When you have a good synergy with someone such as yourself and I, I don't ever want to take that for granted. And in the past, maybe I had, maybe I said, you know, this person that I'm working with, then maybe they don't have the same skill set that I have, or they're not bringing the same amount of effort to the table. But we had good chemistry, and then I kind of flaked out, or I abandoned it, or walked away. For whatever reason, things didn't work out. So I would say to maybe have more respect in the past of the people that I was working with and appreciate like a good working relationship. Solid. Cool. Solid question. <laughs> cool. Um, okay. Uh, so what would you say has been your biggest challenge so far? Great question. Great question. <laughs> um, so I know I talked about it uh, slightly before, but um, I would say pricing, especially when it comes to um, gauging the price on creativity. When you're selling creativity, when you're selling yourself, um, it's hard to find like a guideline for that. Um, in our case, there wasn't a lot of people on the platforms that we were on that did everything. That did uh, you know commercials, music videos, the editing, you know finding the actors, um, filming everything. Uh, there was specifically people for just editing or but this and that, but not everything. So. That was the biggest issue. A lot of the times, um, I feel like a lot of people because I will do the same thing, but you cut yourself a little bit uh, too <laughs> short. Oh, for sure, <laughs> for sure. You know what I mean? And it's um, because because you don't you don't know, and you can't really gauge what other people will spend. You know, that, I used to be in sales before this, and and you know, I, I used to look at people buying this expensive elaborate equipment. I'm like, oh, nobody's going to buy this, and then somebody comes in and like, oh yeah, that's that's not bad. Sure, I'll buy five of those. You know what I mean? Like well, you know, that's ten thousand dollars each. Yeah, it's fifty. That that's a lot of money. Like, but that might not be a lot of money to them. And that's sort of the mindset you can't have, especially working for yourself, because you don't know what their price point is. So you gotta you gotta be realistic. I think that's the best advice I could give is just be realistic when it comes to uh, your time, because your time is is money basically, um, and the amount of effort you're putting into it. Because, um, as you know, that was the biggest roadblock. Um, that we were in for for a while was was gauging what kind of price point we should be at and and how to work that out. Sure. So, so I guess a follow up question to that for me would be, and you know, so I run through this in my mind as well. But when you are afraid to say charge more, is it because you don't want to overcharge for your service, or do you feel as if it's you don't want to chase away the customer, or a combination of both? A combination of both. <laughs> a lot of it was chasing uh, away the customer. So, our mindset, I know for me particularly, um, when I was talking to a customer and trying to establish a contract, um, in the back of my mind, I knew, all right, well, if I said the price that I wanted to, you know, I know there might be somebody that will offer it cheaper than me. So, I was like, maybe I'll just do this price, draw them in, get that, you know, like, so what if it's, you know, a little bit less, you know, it, it'll be something at least, you know, and uh, I think that's what hurt us um, quite a bit. You know, because then you're doing double the amount of projects and pushing more quantity than quality, and you, you never want to do that. You always want to push for uh, like a happy medium of a uh, good amount of quantity per month uh, as far as projects and the the right amount of qual uh, quality yeah. too. You know what yeah. I mean? So um, it, it was sort of a mixture of that too. And it's it's you gotta you gotta realize your own talent too. You know, there's not a. You know, I look at video editing and using. Uh, After Effects and Final Cut Pro and, and Motion and, and a bunch of programs. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, no, that's no problem. You got to realize that not everybody knows how to do that. So yeah. you, you can't you can't assume like, oh well, everybody has a basic knowledge of it. They don't. So yeah. that's why they're hiring they're hiring you for your services. So you gotta you gotta think of that too. And that's that's a good point that you bring up there. Um, I've experienced that with myself, even with certain coding and programming issues where you know I'll get to a point and I'll come up with something that I think. Uh, elaborate or a nice solution to something and then I immediately feel a certain way as if well 
I shouldn't really be charging a lot of money for this because someone else can do it. And the bottom line is, is that not everybody else can do it. Exactly. And, you know, we kind of get caught up in that. I know I can as well. So yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. It's tough. It's yeah. tough. <laughs> you just got to work. I feel like it's, it takes time for that structure to come in. But once that structure does come in, as far as like, all right, they want this certain shot. They want this sort of story shot. Then you already know. Like, all right, well, I know that's going to take that amount of hours. I know that needs two actors at least. I know how much I have to pay those actors. The editing is going to take me two hours, three hours, four. So it, over time, I, I would say it does get better, but you just got to have the right mindset for it. Yeah. Big time. Big time. Yeah, does that ever get overwhelming? Oh, yeah. Having to do everything <laughs> yourself because, you you know, like you said, you'll know even probably down to the lens that you're going to need for the shot ahead of time just to have to be like the guy who takes care of everything. Almost. I mean, I realize you do work with a couple other people, but... Um, yeah, I... It's, it's important to realize that, you know, if you are going to work for yourself, uh, if you're going to start up your own company, that you are going to, you're going to wear a lot of different hats. Yeah. And um, it's going to be, you know, I saw, I think it was a meme or a saying that, um, you know, freelancers in general are the only people that will work 80 hours a week so they don't have to work 40 hours at a regular job, which is absolutely true. Yeah. You know, because yeah. I know for me, I'd rather work all day, every day doing something I like to do than go to a, a you know, a, a a job that I hate, you know, so, um, but yeah, you, you got to realize that you are going to wear a lot of hats in the beginning. Um, I, I think that's said for a lot of different startups, little, different companies, um, but that hard work, it's a grind. You just keep on doing it and at some point where, you know, you're, you're, you're bigger and you're growing and you can actually hire other people to, you know, get a cameraman or I'll get somebody who, do, who does cinematography and, or, or photography and, I'll get a set actor to do this, or I'll do an editor, you know, and I can just be on the camera and just managing everything and directing everything, and, you know, that's that's where I'd rather be. You'll get there, just, it's going to take time. Yeah. It's going to take time. I actually, uh, I have a spare room in my house just for hats. Just for hats? Yeah, just for hats. <laughs> what <laughs> hat am I going to wear today? Oh, yeah. this one, all right. Just gonna... <laughs> exactly. Let's hope for the best, right? <laughs> it's true, though. Oh, I got to see if I get a question for you here. Um... Okay, this is um, this is a pretty good one. What kind of mindset should you be, or if you like the question better, what kind of behaviors do you think you should have even before starting a startup and during a startup? Um, well, there's a lot I could say about that, but I would say, first of all, persistence. You have to have a mind state of persistence, one that... <clears throat> Like, say for example, I've worked with a few different people who, they're really, they're all in. They're all in, they, they're like, you know, I'm 100%, I'm 110% behind you, let's, you know, let's make this happen. And that sort of, that momentum or that emphasis and that, you know, that energy, it lasts for maybe a month. And, you know, where I'm coming from, a month is like, it's nothing. that's <laughs> nothing. You know, like, you really have to have a persistent mind state of, you know, it's going to take, it could take years. As a matter of fact, it will take years. You know, unless you're already coming from a company, your own company that's has generated a, a good amount of revenue. When you're starting from the ground, you have no momentum. You know, your your resources. You know, you might actually have some resources. But that being said, your resources as to where you're going to be when the project's in full swing, then the scope of your resources is still limited. Um, so I would say definitely have an attitude of persistence. A positive attitude. Um, I also like to have an, um, an attitude that's contagious and what I mean by that is, is when, when, when you're around me or when someone's around me if we're talking about business I want you to feel as if you know I put a charge in the proverbial battery so to speak like when you when we're done hanging out I want you to feel like wow I feel renewed like I want to go back and I want to work on this until the next time I see him I want to feel like completely inspired and ready for that next meeting knowing that that's gonna you know really just get thing, keep things going and keep things like it, it, it invigorates. I want to have that, that attitude that will invigorate the people that I'm working with. Um, and also to accept failure um, and criticism, you know, that, that mind state and that, those behaviors of being, of shunning any type of criticism. Now, if somebody straight up says to you, you know, you suck or, and they don't have anything constructive to say, then, you know, you, you do have to disregard that because that's not constructive. But if somebody tells you, you know, I like what you do, but, and whatever the case may be, or, you know, maybe you should reach out and do this differently, or, you know, listen to it. Don't automatically try to have a defensive posture when somebody's trying to critique and make you better at what you're doing. I would say, really, you want to nurture those working, um, 
those working environments and those working relationships that you have with other people and to not take that for granted because I may have in the past and um, regardless of whether or not you feel that they're bringing the same amount of effort to the table as long as they are bringing a good effort a good solid effort to the table you know just really appreciate those people who are willing to share that energy and, and, and stay positive and to help that brand grow and work together in harmony great man yeah, yeah. Um, so my next question for you though is, you know, what, what are your next steps for AB Films? Um, the next steps, um, pretty interesting, yeah. Um, so the next step for AB Films, I would say, we, we sort of want to be our own entity. Um, we don't want to rely on other platforms to uh, sort of advertise or get business for us. Uh, we like to have control over that. Um, so right now, um, we're, we're getting like a, a small budget together and we want to do a, uh, a film. Um, to the, basically our best capacity that we can uh, with the best of the best equipment, um, have a really solid script, shoot it, whether it's a commercial or short film, you know, whatever it may be, and uh, just advertise it to show people, you know, to this capacity you can have your own commercial, your own music video, your own, you know, whatever you may need, um, and sort of advertise it that way. Um, it's something uh, we've been thinking about for a while anyway, um, just because we want to sort of put out really good content that people can just watch that's not a commercial or that it's just not for another business already. Yeah. Um, something that can, people can go on our website and say, you know what, I enjoy seeing this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch it. So um, that, that's our next step. Um, and I know you were talking about, you know, energy and synergy with other people and that I think, I agree that's very important. And not to be off topic, but it sort of ties into um, this question a little bit because it, it is important. I know for us, you know, we're... Um, we're doing two separate things, um, and you do a lot with marketing. I do, you know, the film, and um, we already have the energy. So when we see each other, we always get super excited and, and pumped with everything. And it's it's really important because um, I, I, hopefully I can nail what I said before. But uh, we might be in separate boats, but we're in the same water. So yeah. now that we have the same the, the same energy, and now we're moving to the business part of it, where. Uh, I have that film, but now I need the marketing portion of it, and that's where that that uh, that friendship and that that energy um, that you have with somebody else comes into play, and, and that's very important. So that next energy is is obviously you know I'm going to be working with you, which is which is going to be awesome, which I'm super excited about, and um, and making that product that that we can show people and um, and sort of advertise on our end. So um, that's our next step for us because we we want to take the next step to to bigger budget films, basically. Cool. Sounds good. Sounds amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, this has been the first of what will be many more video blogs. Absolutely. Where we share our stories, our successes, our failures. We were just kind of getting warmed up with this one. But um, hopefully, this finds you well, whoever does end up watching this. So, on behalf of Tyler Medeiros, I'm Justin Perry. Absolutely. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Peace.